Hey. So what sort of insane loot did you rake in today? I got a little Monsters poster. It's so awesome. I'm gonna watch it again today. The apples you've seen was so funny. Oh, wow. That is such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It is like fucking Christmas up in here. Okay, that's fine. But I just have one question and then a word of caution. Have you ever seen a movie called Little Monsters starring Howie Mandel and Fred Savage? But... The seal on the bottle is unbroken. Are you suggesting someone put piss in my apple juice at the factory? All I'm saying is, don't you think Monster Howie Mandel has the power to do something as simple as reseal a bottle? Try using your brain, I'm nuts. Why did the fat kid or whoever drank it know what piss tasted like? I mean, his reaction was nigh instantaneous. It was the 15th day in a row Howie Mandel peed in his juice. Okay, I can accept that. Monster B-list celebrity douchebags are cunning and persistent pranksters. Also, Fred Savage has a really punchable face. But who cares about this? Let's stop talking about it. Did you get the beta yet? No. Did you? Man. I got two copies already, but I don't care. I'm not going to play it or anything. The game sounds boring. Did you see how it got slammed in GameBro? GameBro is a joke and we both know it. Yeah. Why don't you go check your mail? Maybe it's there now. All right. John, look out your window. You see the view of your yard from your window. Hanging from the tree is your tire swing. In a kid's yard, a tree without a tire swing is like a proper gentleman without a monocle. That is to say, he can hardly be considered a terribly proper gentleman at all. And there, beside your driveway, is the mailbox. John, examine the mailbox. The little red arm swingy dealy thing, or whatever it's called, is flipped up. What the hell is that thing called, anyways? You do not have time for these semantics. The red flippy lever thing means that you have new mail, and that means the beta might be here. John, go outside and check the mail. You are about to hurry down the stairs when you hear a car pull into the driveway. It looks like your dad has returned from the grocery store. Ah, great. He's beaten you to the mail. John, just forget it. Check the mail later. If you go downstairs to get it, he will likely monopolize hours of your time. You decide to chill out up here for a while until the dust settles. Sometimes you feel like you are trapped in this room. Stuck, if you will. In a sense which possibly borders on the titular. And now your chum is pestering you again. The clockwork of friendship turns ceaselessly, operating the swing lever dealies of harassment in perpetuity. Whatever. The dude can just hold his damn horses. John, examine games on CD rack. You've put countless man hours into this assortment of quality titles. John, read Colonel Sessica's daunting text. You decide to consult with the Colonel's bottomless wisdom. Good grief, this thing is huge. You could kill a cat if you dropped it. But to really dig into this hefty book, you will have to capture log it. And you're really not sure if you're ready to log jam your other artifacts beneath it just yet. John, capture log fake arms again. What did you just say? You don't want to clog up your... Oh, Jesus. In a momentary lapse of concentration, you accidentally capture log the fake arms again. John, change your pester chum status. You don't think the situation is quite dire enough to go all the way to rancorous. But you still feel that the pester chum client should reflect your mood change in some way. Bully will have to do for now, you guess. This, unsurprisingly, does nothing whatsoever. Alright, you forgot your chum is still pestering you. Is it there? Please say yes. Maybe you can play with TT. she's been pestering me all day about it. She's macking on me so hard all the time I start to feel embarrassed for her. I mean, not that I can blame her or anything. Yes, it is understandable because you are really attractive. I am attracted to you. Thank you. JK, <laughs> no, I don't have it yet. My dad has the mail and I guess I have to go get it from him and see if it's there. And I've been busy spending all afternoon shitting around with my stupid Silidex. It's so frustrating. What's your modus? What? How do you retrieve artifacts from it? Oh, like, one at a time, I guess. And if I put too much in, something falls out. Stack? <laughs> What's yours? Hash map. My bro taught me a few tricks. He basically knows everything and is awesome. What the hell is that? You should probably brush up on your data structures. I guess. Did you at least allocate your strife specibus? No. It could free up a card for you. Plus, let you attack stuff whenever things get too hot to handle. Which is never. What have you got? 
Well, I've got a hammer, but it's trapped under some arms. Wow. You really suck at this, don't you? Just get rid of the arms, and then allocate the hammer to the specibus. How? I don't know. Just use the arms on any old thing, and see if it works. John, combine fake arms with the cake. You stick the fake arms in the cake on your bed. This definitely makes the cake at least 300% more hilarious. You're sure Colonel Sassaker would know the precise index of elevated hilarity. You check the back of your strife specibus for the kind of stratus you have in mind for it. John, select Hammer. Your strife specibus has been allocated with the hammer kind abstratus. The hammer has been removed from your capture log deck and put into the strife deck. John, report progress to TG. Okay, I did it. Hammer kind? Yeah. Okay, that will be the permanent allocation for your specibus. I guess I should have mentioned that. Uh... Hope you like hammers, dude. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. I can't imagine it's going to be all that relevant. Now that you've got some space in your Silidex to work with, you figure you might as well start squandering it immediately. Ordinarily, this ridiculous book would be way too heavy to carry around in any practical way. You guess maybe this is in one respect in which the cards present some convenience. John, examine Game Bro Magazine. Game Bro. Why the Game of the Year or whatever isn't as good as some other stuff I like that's better. Game Bro feature, Spurb. So okay, Spurb is this game that a lot of cats seem hella pumped of, and this beta is sitting on my desk for review, so I'm like, yeah man, I'll write something. But I don't know, I'm like, this about houses or some noise? That's fine, I'm sure that's like fucking dynamite in a handbag for some brosives, but all I'm saying is, when do you get to thrash anything? While you're playing house or some shit, are you ever in jeopardy of getting mud on your doll's dress or whatever from busting out, and I quote, the mad stunts all wicked up ins? You know what I'm saying, bro -yama? I didn't actually play this game, but I give it 1.5 hats to keep it real. At this point, I'd like to give a shout out to my boy Dennis who was over the other day. We were going to chill in front of the dark night and he was so psyched of it, y'all. So this one time he was leaning against the screen door and the shit popped open, and the back deck was wet and he slipped down the steps and broke his thumb on the lawn. It wasn't a long fall, but hey, I guess a thumbo wasn't made for supporting the brunt of a huge useless tool against wet grass. We never did watch Dark Knight on account of Ron trucking his ball and candy ass skirt to the hospital, but it's cool. I still got another watch of me. Bro tell Wanda. Bro notes. Dennis was so wasted. <laughs> I mean, damn. Ratings for Spur. One and a half sick hats out of five.